All right. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Hi, Adam. Uh, you are fine with being on YouTube. I'll be posting this probably at some point. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Perfect. Okay. So in your initial message to me, you had mentioned, uh, I think that you wanted to work on your openings a little bit and that's where you thought your weak areas were. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I, um, I've been playing for a while. I, 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 I know very few real openings or, but I have kind of developed my favorites at this point. Um, yes. But yeah, I, I think it's an area I can work on and yeah, I'm happy to take your advice on it. Sure, sure. And uh, I noticed, I think you joined chess.com, at least to the account that I saw. It's probably a year back or something, like sometime in 2021. Oh. Yeah, absolutely. I, I started playing a bit earlier. I have another account, um, mm, maybe okay. three, four years ago. But yeah, the, the last year would have been a bit more active. But you have been playing chess for like three, four years, you would say? Uh, yeah, I would say about five, six years. So I'm, uh, I'm, not, uh, I'm not one of those wonder kids who've been playing it since they're six years old, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. Uh, I picked it up just after college. And uh, yeah, I've loved it. I've been uh, really into it ever since. Watch a lot of YouTube videos, and I try I try to, to play a lot of Blitz and a lot of Bullet as well. Yeah, I did notice that actually. So that's one of the things we will talk about. Um, so maybe what we will do start to start with is I will show you some of the games, um, some of your own games. So okay. I have um, got gone through some of your recent games that you have played. I skipped the bullet once because, you know, I didn't know what quality uh, will be there. So <laughs> yeah. I kept the, uh, just the blitz games. So yeah, we'll go through them. And then I think maybe the, for the second half, I will show you some openings. So I have at least some idea of what you're playing for white and black. And mm -hmm. maybe I can show you some improvements in some places. Yeah. Cool. So, That's all right. Okay. Let's see. So you should be able to see a chessboard uh, here soon enough. Let me know once you do. Uh, yes, I do. Okay, perfect. So this game, I believe you are playing black. Okay, so mm -hmm. let's see. Yeah, so black, I tend to, I yeah, tend e5? to struggle it with it more. I think oh, I'm really? always, yeah. If if it's e4 followed by e5, I'm, or if if white plays e4, I'm generally happy. I know how to navigate the Rio Lopez or or the Italian or some of the the trappy lines. Uh, okay. But if it's D4, I, I struggle. I'm making it up completely. Uh, and I don't really understand where to take the game in the middle game past mm. basic development. Okay, okay, fine. So maybe when we look at the openings, we can start with the D4 part. Yeah, so mm -hmm. that might help you more. Okay, sure. So in this game, this opening called the Vienna, uh, Knight F3 is most popular, but uh, Knight C3 is a move. And you play mm -hmm. Knight C6, which is also a fine move. Uh, my personal recommendation and my, you know, my personal favorite here as black is knight f6. And there is one particular reason for it. So here there are many moves that white has, like uh, they can go g3 and pin to the bishop or bishop c4 or something else. Um, there is the gambit f4. But uh, against bishop c4, this is a popular line. Uh, uh -huh. Here there is something black can do, a common trick to get rid of the white center. Do you know what I might be talking about? Yeah, yeah. Um, I think the trick is is taking the pawn on e4 and, and forking yeah. the, the knight and bishop. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. you don't actually win anything, but basically you are able to get rid of white c4 pawn while you okay. still have some uh, influence in the center thanks to your pawn still being on e5. And whenever you can do that, I would say um, it is generally a good idea as black. So I would say you already achieved something good in the opening just getting okay. rid of some uh, center control. So for this reason, I like uh, knight f6. So you can incorporate that. Maybe one other mm -hmm. tricky line to know after this. Why it could throw in queen h5. Maybe I'll have you think, what would you do here? Uh, queen h5, I would. Oh, that's a tricky move. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, what you, you're I, fine. <laughs> yeah, I, I would go uh, f6, queen f6. Mm, queen f6 is allowing your knight to be captured. Ah, yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. So I'll have you think for a, just a second here. Yeah. yeah. Um, see, my instincts tell me push the pawn to g6, but obviously you just get checked. Um, and we need to defend f7. And the only way to defend f7 
queen. Oh, oh, okay. Push the pawn up to d, possibly to the d five. Um, no, no, mm. right? No, no. Yeah. Yeah, it, would, sure it just delays the problem. Yeah, it just it delays, delays the problem. problem. <laughs> they probably still uh, take it, maybe. Yeah, yeah. So here the move is uh, knight d6. Now you are losing this pawn, but you're not losing. If you realize in this position, we initially grabbed their pawn, right? So we are one pawn up as of this moment. So mm -hmm. you, they will get their pawn back through this uh, move order, and you do knight d6 to save your knight and not get mated. And here, after something like this. Uh, the knight is, of course, oddly placed in front of the d pawn, but position is overall fine, uh, even though you have traded queens and you continue this playing this queenless middle game. And okay. this way, you have avoided all tricks. Uh, this is only if they play, you know, this queen h5 line. Uh, yeah. So you have defused the bomb, so to say. <laughs> okay, okay, brilliant. Yeah. So basically, if, if they play the knight to c3 as white yeah. after e4, it's it's better to go. Knight f6 instead of uh... see the reason I think I I I, use, I used to go knight c6 was I, I I'm I'm ultimately trying to potentially move the pawn up to d6 and maybe go for some sort of uh, uh, some sort of uh, pin uh, of their potential knight on f3 ah, so that's yeah, it's yeah, kind yeah. of like a typical e4 plan. Um, sure, sure. I see. I see. I see. What but uh, so, yeah. Uh, but no, no. You're, you. Your your suggestion makes absolute uh, a lot of sense. Uh, I don't think it's like necessarily that much better, but there are those small points to it. So you can try it and see how yeah. you like it. A lot of the times when I do follow, I actually play exactly as you've played now. Uh, oh, this is your I, game. This <laughs> oh, it is my game. Okay, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. perfect. Yeah, uh, and, now and then a lot I of times I get into... queen. Yeah, yeah. So probably that means. In this move order, by the way, this is one more big benefit of knight f6. If the knight is on f6, queen never comes out to g4. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, hopefully I'm convincing you to play knight f6 first. Absolutely. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. I've, to, I, I, I think I did the reverse. Instead of think of what to do, I just learned that when the queen goes there, move the king to f8. And then sometimes I've, 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 it's been ca I've, I've caught the person back. I'd move the oh, knight to f3. Okay. If, if he plays... Like a normal move, I I have a pawn to d5, and okay, you know okay. there's there's a, yeah, but yeah. I definitely understand what you mean. It's it's not a it's not practical for yeah. For and king f8 like is that. a you know very awkward move to make. It defends the pawn, but now you cannot castle, and now you have signed up for a you know awkward rest of the game. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So um, yeah, but okay, you managed to win it. So clearly you have some experience. Okay, so d6 is fine. Yeah, now I noticed this, that in your game, I think you are good with the initiative. What I mean is, I think attacking and creating threats and keeping the tempo going in your favor comes naturally to you, yeah? Is that right? Mm -hmm. you say? Yeah, definitely. I, 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 I find those moves easier to find as opposed yes. to slowly building up for a positional long-term idea. I find yeah, that. Yeah. I think that's where I struggle with openings that are like the London or any opening yeah. that's closed without a clear pawn yes. break yes. is is not easy for me to to manage in my, my brain. Yes, yeah. yes. No, that makes a lot of sense. And that is, I would say, not necessarily a weakness. It is a strength you can, you know, uh, cultivate. Like, you just have to choose, like you're saying, openings that fit your style and that are more aggressive and not this closed, boring, uh, you know, when you're in games. And if you mm -hmm. play more open games where you get the chance to show your attacking skills i think uh, you will do well and you you are choosing those e5 is a good choice i think for um, someone who is uh, aggressive as black but uh, maybe you know you don't want this king f8 line maybe you pick something yeah absolutely <laughs> yeah absolutely. look at that knight f6 later okay so yeah. here all these moves are good um, knight d4 with tempo c6 with tempo just pushing white back this is all good okay yeah i think this is fine um, yeah all of this now i think uh, and i think i also noticed I think you have a pretty good sense of how to arrange your pieces like so that they can be active. Like I like this uh, castling by hand uh, that you did here, just uh, king f7. Yeah, and... the only regret I had there was yeah. uh, if you moved uh, one move back. Oh, okay. uh, I, yeah, just here. Uh, uh, uh -huh. Just after he played pawn to a3, I regretted uh -huh. not bringing my bishop back, I think. 
because then I oh, could have yeah. moved my bishop one step further back and because uh, I thought it was it's quite a nice bishop. So that was so, my only regret. I should have delayed. I I think I should have oh, delayed. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Like you mean this this one? Play exactly. B six, so you can uh, save it. Yeah. 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 No, that's true. That bishop is uh, definitely a very strong piece along with your knight on d four. Um, yeah. So, but okay. But still, mm -hmm. still, I think uh, you know, having played king f eight. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you have managed. Uh, okay, yeah. This knight on b5 looks a little odd, but uh, fine. Okay, so this part, all everything is good. Now you have castled, you know, by hand. Okay, so all of this is fine. Uh, let's see. So here you played the uh, rook a8. Now here maybe I'll bring you to my main one of my main suggestions for your improvement. So I noticed that mainly you are playing blitz games that are like three minutes with two seconds. Yeah, three plus mm -hmm. two. Or you're playing some bullet two plus one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So those games, because they are so fast, they are not good for improvement. Uh, like, you know, many people play it. It's fun. Of course, I'm mm -hmm. sure you realize it's a lot of fun to play those fast games. But if you are looking to improve, uh, if you are looking to improve as a player, I would suggest uh, playing less of uh, Blitz and Bullet. Uh, bullet, I would suggest you eliminate altogether which yeah. might sound extreme but uh, because it's mostly a mouse moving contest right like you just <laughs> who is Absolutely. faster who can who can flag the other person yeah it's not uh, very little uh, to do with actual good moves uh, mm -hmm. blitz is okay but uh, maybe limiting it and then i would say your main uh, make your main chess diet be rapid games on chess.com mm -hmm. <clears throat> like 15 minutes with 10 second increment that mm -hmm. will be a better choice. Uh, and I, I, yeah, mm -hmm. I did right. used to play uh, previously. Uh, I play I, fifteen ten on Lee Chess, so okay. I have an account uh, only fifteen ten mostly or five five. Um, okay, but um, but yeah, no, I I hundred percent agree. The quality of those games tend to be less one move blunders or yeah, 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 and not just uh, it's not just that those games are better, but uh, if you play too much Blitz and Bullet, it'll hurt your game overall like your instinct will be even when you are playing slower games your instinct will be to move you know like make the first move that comes to your mind because mm -hmm. blitz and bullet trains you for that you know you are making moves in seconds uh, whereas uh, real good chess you know uh, doesn't happen in seconds yeah so you okay. should uh, spend more time so that would be my recommendation like i'm not saying eliminate the blitz i am saying eliminate bullet you eliminate mm -hmm. you know you keep some blitz but uh, try to play more 15, 10 games or uh, longer rapid games. That will be a big advice. And yeah. if you do that, I would say if you do that for a month, let's say consistently, where let's say Blitz is 20% and 80% of your chess playing time is spent on rapid, you should see some improvement because I think you have got good fundamentals in terms of, uh, even though your openings may not be very well tuned, but your sense of how to develop pieces and uh, how to make pieces active and how to attack, all these things are good. So I think um, playing slower games will help you, in my opinion. Yeah. So you can give it a shot. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Fine. So rook a8, um, it's okay. But, you know, also this rook is not doing anything. But okay, in these e4, e5 openings, many times it discourages white from playing d4 since e4 is hanging, things like that. So, okay, rook a8, nothing too bad. Uh, I would have thought of playing like 96 uh, with someday maybe eyeing the f4 square. Um, just trying to um, bring the knight over to somewhere useful. Like it's clear this knight on c7, you know, uh, either goes to the edge of the board or cannot go here, cannot go here, you know. So yeah, so, it doesn't have. Uh, go ahead. So I, I, I think this is sometimes what I, I feel is one of my issues. So I think it's, it's, it's forming the plan. So in my head, I would have moved. I moved the rook to to e8 to protect the pawn on e5 because I'm thinking of possibly going for a break, and I think this is the part yeah, where, okay. yeah, and I, I and a lot of the times my my game plan is go for a pawn break, try to have more pieces than the other person near that break, um, and then just see what happens, um, and I think that's where the the deciding between do I need to go for a break in this instance or prepare for it or should I do more maneuvering and I'm like I'm not always sure how to I don't I, I, yeah I don't know how 
how to kind of arrange my mindset in a way where I can think in that way. Yeah, so I think what you are describing, like going for a break and bringing more pieces over there, that is not a bad idea. Like uh, in general, in many positions, the pawn breaks do often form some of the main ideas and plans. So, you know, breaks are not, uh, like if you're going for some pawn breaks, it's not uh, always a bad idea. I think it can Mm -hmm. be pretty good. You're doing something active rather than just sitting around. Um, So one thing I like to think about that helps me and also like uh, there is, yeah, I'll say two things. One is regarding plan, like, you know, uh, I teach other students, right? Uh, And a lot of people tell me that, you know, they don't have a plan and they feel like they don't know how to create a plan. I can tell you that uh, most players, including grandmasters, when they play, they don't have some deep plan worked out, uh, you know, like when they are, you know, in this situation, a grandmaster won't suddenly have some 10 move plan that, okay, my knight is going to come here and F2, and then somehow my queen is going to deliver a mate on G2 on move 46, you know, <laughs> mm-hmm. it's not going to be like that. Um, mm-hmm. It will be move by move. They will generally be thinking in the right direction, like what the position needs. And one small tip to do that is just thinking about your pieces, like basically just activity of pieces, like which pieces can I improve? Which pieces, which is my least active piece? There is a principle, um, there's a famous uh, chess author, Jakob Agard. I don't know if you have heard of him. Uh, He has written some books and stuff. Um, But one simple idea, and it's a popular idea, not just from him, but many authors. you look at your least active piece, which piece is absolutely the least active, not doing anything, doesn't have much prospects. If we look, you know, your rook, not bad. It's putting some pressure on a4, which is defended, but still, you know, it means that the queen and rook have to be tied down for the moment to the defense. Otherwise you will be able to capture. So it's doing something, it's not bad. Um, If we look at the queen, not too bad, Um, you know, given how the position is, like Mm -hmm. it's not anything too bad. If we look at this rook, fine. I mean, it's on a half open or rather an open file. Uh, mm-hmm. Open file, you know, um, do you know, like uh, an open file is called open even if there are pieces on it, as long as there are no pawns on it. So since there are no pawns on the F file, uh, the rook is actually useful. You know, someday you may consider doubling the rooks. So rook F7 mm-hmm. and bring the A rook to F8. Uh, this knight, um, it's on its natural square could be better somewhere else maybe I, i'm i keep looking at this f4 square that seems like a very annoying spot if you can bring one of the knights now if you look at this knight this is the worst <laughs> because mm-hmm. uh, you know it's really not doing anything and it's uh, really calling out to be going to e6 and then see what happens maybe you will get a chance to go to f4 and bother him on the king side maybe you will get a chance to go to c5 and put some pressure on d3 It has more possibilities from e6 than on c7, where it really doesn't do anything useful. Um, So this knight becomes a common, you know, good candidate. And as far as the d5 break, it's good that you had an idea. You are protecting e5 so you can go d5. I think that is also fine. It's not a bad idea. And you can include your, um, you know, knight in that plan somehow. Maybe the knight on e6 can go to c5 or maybe can go to f4 and g6, something like that. Yeah. So Mm -hmm. basically simple, like something very simple. That's not complicated. It's just thinking about your pieces, which piece needs improvement and how can I improve it? And I think looking at your game, I feel you do that to some extent intuitively. Um, Yeah. So it doesn't have to be very complicated more than that. Um, Mm -hmm. And along with that, just some calculation. Like if you're going to make a move that is sharp, like, I don't know. if you're going to play d5 right here, let's say, then you need to figure out, okay, what happens after knight takes e5? You know, am I, are the tactics working or am I not getting my pawn back and just going to be in a bad position? So Mm -hmm. uh, just calculation and bringing your pieces to better squares, that itself forms majority of uh, planning, even for better players in my opinion. Yeah, okay. Yeah, Yeah, let's see. So knight g5, okay. We played b5, going for a different uh, pawn break. But maybe I'll ask you, thinking about pieces again, uh, who do you think, whose pieces gain more from this pawn break? Like, uh, are your pieces gaining more or are the white pieces gaining more activity? Whose pieces are getting more active as a result of this change of pawn structure? Yeah, so 
I, I see your point. All of a sudden, his rook is an open file. I think yeah. my hope was I would be able to... Def so I, I, I think I was also thinking about that knight being useless there. And I was thinking right, if he takes... Right. But now that I look at it better, the knight isn't actually doing much there either. Um, those True, two, you know. it, it doesn't have, you know, like d4 is not available. Like a3 anyway doesn't want to go. Like all it can do is come back to c7. Yeah. So mm -hmm. as long as white doesn't push c4, if white pushes c4, it's like positional suicide. Then mm -hmm. <laughs> the knight gets to its uh, like dream square. But, mm -hmm. you know, a good player doesn't do that. And then the knight is still um, not very useful. And now you have opened uh, the rook up, which of course right now it cannot do much. It cannot enter, but it is a long-term factor. You know, this file will not go away. It'll be there. Mm -hmm. And it's something that white could use later in the game. So I would say B5, just from that simple consideration, whose pieces are benefiting more, um, not the right idea. So something small, simple, like you can also, their knight is in your half of the board. So when your opponent's pieces come to your half of the board, they can be bothersome. They can create threats. So you try to challenge them, either kick them back or trade them. So knight e6 with an idea of trading or h6, kicking the knight back, um, then followed by knight e6 would be good ideas. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because this position, I don't think there is anything even white is doing that's urgent, right? Like they're not going to checkmate you in five moves or anything. Mm -hmm. So both it's a complex battle where, you know, still a lot of chess is left to be played and both sides are kind of seeing what the other side is doing. <laughs> yeah. So this is a yeah. slower maneuvering stage of the game where mm -hmm. I think it's better to improve your pieces rather than taking some, um, uh, like changing the pawn structure with B5. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So queen D2, just, I think, connecting the rooks, developing the queen. Okay. Now you brought the knight back. Um, they could have bothered you a little bit with rook A7, but uh, they did not. It's fine. They voluntarily retreat their knight, which is a little strange, but okay. Now you do your plan, d5. I think d5 is fine. Um, and now it's a tactical, uh, small small mistake maybe. So they at least cannot take directly on e4. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. fine. Okay, so you played this move. Um, somewhat a bold move, um, self-pinning, but I think you figured out that you are going to be okay, yeah? Um, like... You're not losing a piece. So yes. Yeah, so, yeah, exactly. Exactly. So yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. Okay. Fine. So this all is fine. Defending. Okay. Here is the blunder from your opponent. Just gives up a rook. And now you manage to uh, win the game, which is good. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. We will not maybe look at the whole thing, but you converted. Yeah. It's fine. yeah. Okay. Fine. So I think. Um, the main areas where you can improve one is definitely the opening part i think that is probably the major one and second is playing slower games and thinking about your pieces that should help you a lot so we have spent a long time just looking at this game maybe i'll look at one more and let's yeah. see how that goes okay any questions you have about this uh, whatever we reviewed adam you no know, uh, thank you so much like definitely the your advice as to um First of all, the, the opening advice that uh, playing knight f6 in response to knight uh, c3 is, 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 is already going to resolve, I think, a lot of my problems because I do fall into this line a lot and I'm not always uh, on top. Um, but I, I, I would definitely uh, love to get your advice, like, you know, on... Um, some other openings, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, there's, okay. there's definitely some that I... Yeah. Mm. Yeah, maybe, okay, if that is the case. I have a... Um, of course, to be it. honest, I'm, I'm, I'm learning from everything, so I'm happy to, to spend time on, oh, on, no, on no. any chosen sure. game. Yeah. For sure, for sure. Yeah, yeah. No, and I'm, you know, I would like to help you in the area where you think you need help. And openings do seem to be something that maybe you can get. I don't think... Because uh, I'm, 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 right I'm, 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 I'm a quick learner, so... And because I've played a lot of the same openings... Um, I can almost predict exactly what I will play for a lot of moves uh, yes, in, yes. in in the first eight nine moves. So I, I've so uh, and I know I'm making the same repetitive mistakes. So just knowing yes. one yes. switch is already uh, saving you. a percentage yeah. of the games. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Okay. Okay. 
uh, why don't you log on to chess.com what i will do is i'll share they have this thing <laughs> new feature called classroom so i we can yeah. share a board where uh, i'll be able to make moves and you will be able to make moves and oh, yeah so you can log on to chess.com and just let me know once you are there i'm here uh, okay you are there so i think you may have to be in play um uh, okay. like go to play and then play again let's see can i find you okay i think i have you okay so you should see some kind of notification pop up somewhere that have invited to you to a room uh, okay seems like cool. i have accepted okay okay and you have joined perfect okay so this is a board that we are sharing and mm -hmm. you, uh, let me share that on the zoom here so i can record it so uh, you should be able to make moves and i can make moves to this classroom thing if i can figure out how to give oh, you see. access uh, uh, let's see is there a way to give you access participant controls play as white play as black okay maybe i'll let you do play as black mm -hmm. okay what about now are you able to make some moves now yeah yeah you can yeah oh perfect. so so this would be one move, and and previously I would try free and carry the, the the bishop on the king side. Okay. So, so I'd go can, either, yeah. yeah we can but we can go with this one. Yeah. So let's say uh, d4, c4. What would you do here? Queen's gambit. Uh, yeah. So two main moves. I would either knight f6, or I would play the semi slav. Semi slav. Okay. So you know some theory in the semi slav. No, I know that you put the pawn up and then you just make sure you don't, uh, uh, you kind of complete some sort of triangle and you fit the pieces together and, and okay, you go okay. from there. <laughs> sure, sure. That's fine. And how does that, uh, how do you like I, it? Like, the, um, I don't mind it. The reason I, I started doing it was um, because I, I started encountering some problems with knight f6 and usually... Oh. Either it was completely symmetrical and then they brought their queen out somewhere and we exchanged and I I seem to lose a lot more if it's a very symmetrical position in, okay, in okay. D4. Mm, and here, if they take, what do you do? Uh, if they take, I usually take with uh, knights. And if uh, this, like this is the downside of the opening, right? Like you are giving the center. To yeah. The right. It's not the end of the world. There are openings like this, but um, okay. And here, what do your opponents mostly play? I don't know. Maybe let's say knight f3. Knight f3, yeah. So here I do something like this. And then I, I would say, do you continue with uh, with yeah, bishop there or bishop on, on c4? Uh, and mm, and okay. I, I would probably do something like this. Okay, okay. Hmm, okay, okay. So... This is uh, again. Not, uh, I, I don't enjoy these positions. Like I'm, I'm not happy. You don't enjoy this. This is just to, okay. this is just to survive, but hopefully this not falling. This is survival. Trouble. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Mm, so I'm okay. not. I'm not doing this. None of my black op like uh, with white. Obviously, I'm. I like some of my openings, and I'd love your advice on how to make them better. But black, okay. I'm. I'm really not. Um, like I don't have a favorite black response. I'm just. Okay. Okay. I'm happy to take your recommendations. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And have you ever played with the Fianchetto yourself? I think you were saying something about that. That against d4 you do something. Uh, what yeah, is the other so option that you do? Uh, I do. I hope. Okay, it's working. D5 Amazing. again. Are you sure? Oh, sorry. Apologies. <laughs> oh no no no. Let's not lose our chance. This <laughs> yeah, is uh, working after great. Uh, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Great yeah. Wow. Well, yeah. um, okay. No d5. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. So this is what you do. Okay. Show mm -hmm. me what you do here. Okay, and what do you do here? Okay, so King's Indian. King's Indian. Is this called the King's Indian? Okay. Yes, yes. This is what you play? Like, this is the other option? Yeah, this is okay. this is, was my slightly older option. But uh, what I found here is I, I had to be... I found it hard to find a break. I could slowly develop, but I'm kind of like hunched back a lot of the time. A lot of the times, yeah. either I'll... I might castle here, yeah. or if I'm I'm scared, I might do this. Yeah, yeah, and uh, this is actually yeah one of the I think 
maybe not. Uh, sorry, maybe maybe not this no, no. move. Uh, I, no, no, I that's probably fine. Would've... That's fine. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. You know, going back and forth seems to be hard. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So okay, no. So this is not bad, but uh, not to your style because you get some closed position where you have to maneuver around and. Uh, also, you are cramped, yeah, because white has been allowed to put three pawns in the center and then push in the center and they have more space, like they just have yeah. more space throughout the game. This is a very popular opening, like uh, Bobby Fischer, Gary Kasparov used to play. Uh, so world champions have played it. I myself have tried it. I don't like it, but it's not for everyone. Um, so you don't like it, you say, or you are okay? No, I, I'm, I'm very happy to be given an option. I, I, I've, I've, the only thing that comes to mind that that someone had suggested to me previously was uh, the perk, um, but I, it'd be great. I don't know if you, if you're familiar with that opening or yeah. Um, so perk is as uh, against e4 though. So against d4, uh, ah, if you okay. play the perk, they can always so you know e4 it goes like this. So I'll just make moves from both sides. You can watch for a second. So you're able to see the moves, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So this is the perk. Um, you know something like this. And then let's say then they go g6 and Kienketo. So something like this. So okay. But this is an e4 opening. And if you do this against d4, often people will make it transpose to the king's Indian. So let's say against d4, you do the same thing. Uh, essentially, you will end up getting the exact same opening that you were in. <laughs> so it yeah. becomes the king's Indian again. So yeah, okay. perk not against, uh, you can't do perk against uh, d4. Okay. Some, so uh, there's something I would. Uh, like you to try it's a uh, it'll be new for you but i can show you some little ideas and then maybe you can explore a little bit on your own and you can try and see how you like it uh, it's very mm -hmm. aggressive it is a gambit so you will sacrifice a pawn almost at the start of the game but it's a very good gambit so the opening i'm talking about is called the benko gambit have you heard of it uh, i have heard of it but um, i wouldn't know it no know it okay but, yeah, that's fine yeah. Yeah, that works because then I get to make the moves. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so no glitches. Okay, so let me show you. So you start with F, knight f6. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay, so just want to make sure that these games are being saved. Maybe I'll clear this out because at the end, I would like you to be able to like download the PGN and stuff. So, you know, when you leave from the lesson, you can download the moves and uh, you have that with you. So let's see yeah. if I can clear that out. Okay, let's clear everything. And let's start over. Okay, so d4, knight f6. Now, uh, did I click something? No, right? Okay. Okay, fine. Yeah. So knight f6. Um, this anyway you are familiar with. Now, mm -hmm. of course, black doesn't have to play c4. Sorry, white doesn't have to play c4. White can do other things. Uh, but generally, I'll show you the main line, Benko, how it goes against uh, c4. Um, and you can see, you can try it. I would say you try it in some games. Give it at least. I would say 10, 15 games before you say it's absolutely not for me. Like, uh, and not blitz games, 15, 10 games. <laughs> you know, no problem. you don't want to make a decision in half hour of 10 blitz yeah. games. Yeah, okay, fine. So you go C5 here immediately, immediately attacking their center. And usually okay. white players will push. Uh, so uh, this gets into something called a Benoni, but in, Benoni would be something like here, uh, proceeding with D6 or E6, but we are going to gambit a pawn with b5. This is the big oh. gambit. Yeah, we are giving up this pawn with uh, no intention of getting it back immediately. <laughs> so white can simply take it. And then we are actually going to give up another one. So this one, we will get it back. So it's not giving us up. Um, mm -hmm. And let's show you the main line, some of the main, main ideas. So let's say they take, take, and this is one of the main lines. So now what have we achieved? Basically, what we have achieved is a half open B file, a half open A file, and um, active bishop lead in development. Like if you see, all of white pieces are, <clears throat> you know, sitting at their original squares, whereas we have developed two uh, pieces, and we'll have a lead in development, and we have these queen side open files, which we will use to put pressure on white's queen side. So an advanced idea, but I'll show you how this might go. So let's say, okay, knight c3, we fianchetto our bishop. Let's say okay. Do you always fianchetto the bishop? In this Benko, yes, yes, because- And, and, and you're not afraid right. of uh, pawn d6? 
no we are in so in this position no i'm not afraid of 1d6 yeah no okay no i don't think if so. you think if you yeah uh, if you if you are afraid you can always play d6 first i think that is fine that is part of our move order so you you know ah, if you're okay. worried about d6 you can play d6 yeah we are not avoiding d6 uh, forever so you can play d6 yeah. let's say you go d6 they play e4 you want to inconvenience them um, by not letting them castle so you trade bishops and now you continue uh, developing let's say something like this and they will this is called the artificial castling variation because you know like this artificially castling so something like this now um, our development now after knight d7 so now our development is uh, you know uh, of the minor pieces is complete we have brought the knights to their position you can get to the bishop castled now what are the plans uh, the plan is basically pressure on the queen side. So I'll tell you a simple plan uh, without going into any theory. Um, so you just play the following. Let's say white goes something. Rook e1, you go queen a5. If they go e5 at any point, you can decide whether you're going to take or not. Both options uh, can be valid at some point. But I'll tell you some overall plans, um, like high-level ideas. So we'll arrange our pieces in the following way. Let's say... They play some move, yeah, I don't know, uh, bishop e3. So this is the first thing. Our major pieces, the queens and the rooks, are putting maximum pressure on the queen side. You can see the b2 pawn already starting to hang. Right, so they have to defend it in some way. And now we will be um, trying to open up this bishop, which will put pressure, further pressure on the queen side. So you can, there are two ideas. One is knight g4 to e5, and then the knight can go to c4. Sometimes you can play c5 followed by knight d3. So let me show you. Let's, I'll just make some maybe not so good moves. So let's say, uh, let's say black, white does something. And so as you can see, we have massive, massive pressure on the queen side. And at some point you will have tactics like, you know, knight b2 or rook b2. You will have to calculate, depends on what exactly the situation. And another plan with the knight on e5 is, let's say, you may play um, c4 and getting the knight to d3. That's another idea. So I'm making bad moves for white, but just to illustrate what might happen. So something like this. And here again, the knight is very strong, putting pressure on all kinds of points. And at some point in many games, if you play correctly, you will get your pawn back, even if you don't. Um, this is a lot of, uh, what should I say? It's not, um, it's not comfortable to play for white uh, because of this constant pressure, especially on this B2 point. Yeah. So you, you can give so it a shot. So basically, yeah, yeah okay. actually it, it looks really good. So just, just so I understand, if, yes. if it comes true like this, essentially I don't want the center to open up and I want to just keep going for applying pressure to the queen side. Yeah. Would and that be in the middle true. game plan? True, but they will, that is absolutely true, but white will try to, you know, open up the center. So often white plays e5, and now it depends on the specific situation, whether you want to take or not. So let's say both both are often fine. Like, even if you take, there is nothing too bad that happens. There is another idea I want you to know. Like, often, if white plays e5, this d5 pawn becomes a weakness. Like, there may be some challenges. Let's, you know, let's assume... Um, something like this and you know we can start putting pressure i know e7 is hanging but in just generally generally speaking mm -hmm. we can start putting pressure on uh, this d5 pawn and that becomes another source of worry for uh, white so uh, we will basically we are playing for more active pieces and queen side pressure these are the main ideas that i can give you in this short time that we have another mm -hmm. one important detail about this and I'm sure if you look up Benko Gambit on YouTube, Benko Gambit, you know, search it in the chess uh, openings explorer. Um, like, you know, um, I don't know if you look at my Zoom quickly. Yeah, uh, okay. I, I, I'm, no. yeah you are. Okay. So here, mm -hmm. you know, uh, I'll not go there because it'll take me out of the board, but um, you can, you know, see openings there and just Google um, Benko Gambit sample games, good games. You will find a lot of good players, um, top grandmasters playing this. And this is the good part about it. Even if you decided to, if you decided that, let's say you played some games on it online and you like it, 
if you decide to go deep into it, um, learn about it, you know, from some videos or maybe even books, whatever, um, it is not very vast. It's limited. Like, it's not it's not like the King's Indian. The King's Indian, if you want to learn deeply, it if, you know, five years they've locked in a room. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> like, yeah. it's a vast ocean. Uh, but the Venko Gambit, it's not a vast ocean. Like, you can do this. Like, you can learn it. But first, you try it out. You don't have to learn anything. Um, maybe I would say after our lesson, if you're interested, just look up some YouTube videos, you know, by anybody, Benko Gambit, you know, you will see where, where the author shows some ideas how Black should play, and then try it out in your own games. And uh, I would say don't give up before you play 15 rapid games with it. So don't, uh, you know, lose your first game and say, this ain't for me. <laughs> you know, that's Yeah, that's uh, too, too quick. So yeah, one more idea that I wanted to share with you is... Um, Often, trading queens, despite being down upon, is good for us. Because this queen often is helping white to defend the queen side um, structure. But if you can trade queens, often end games are going to be better for you, despite being uh, down upon. Because we'll just have massive pressure. Just remember to place your rooks on A and B, the A and B files. And and this is not going to be comfortable, like I can assure you. Like... Uh, already for example you know we are threatening to take the knight take the pawn yeah like black white has a very hard time trying to keep their stuff together like they will have a very very hard time trying to hold on to their pawn and if they do they will end up in not a great position it'll be a fight like you will not go down Mm -hmm. just being a pawn down and losing Uh, yeah so you can try this out um you know it may suit you or it may not suit you i like it a lot personally yeah but uh, you know you have to try this out and see if you like it but i think for an aggressive player who likes to play with the initiative likes to make attacking moves threatening moves this is a good weapon and also you will not get attacked on the king side like uh, because you will keep white so busy on the queen side they don't have time to you know throw some h4 h5 at you um, it almost never works in the benko gambit yeah yeah no i'm i'm really excited to try it um yeah yeah, yeah so I'll definitely, definitely have, a, have a look yeah. at it. Yeah. yeah, and you know, explore it further on the internet um, using free resources. I'm sure there are a ton of things you will find if you just Google and YouTube and stuff. And uh, I think later on you can download these uh, analysis that I'm doing. I think there is this download button. I'm hoping it's available for you also on the classroom. Um, Let's make sure. Yes, it is. Okay, so once we are done, you can download everything that we discuss and uh, yeah, it'll be with you. So you can expand upon it later with your own research. Okay, so maybe we have some more time. We can talk about uh, some other openings. Um, So D4, you can try this against, uh, you know, like this is of course against the mainline D4, like if they play C4 on move two, but if they don't play C4, let's say they play the London system, yeah? Like, I'm sure people play London system against you. Yeah. What do you do here? Yeah. This is like uh, the most popular opening on earth. <laughs> yeah. If, to be yeah. honest, at, at, at this stage, um, either I'll, I'll continue Fion Ketting or I'll. Uh, That's totally fine. Yeah. Or or I'll push the pawn to D5. But probably. If, yeah. Both are fine. Probably Fion Ketting. Yeah. Both are fine. Yeah. Um, and uh, with D5, do you have a certain way to arrange your pieces or do you just uh, like wing it? I mean, I, 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 if I do it, I might end up trading the black bishop. I, I try to not put my pawn on c6. Oh, sorry, my knight on c6. Mm, that's uh, a good idea. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I try to hope to maybe get a break either on 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 the c file or the e file. But beyond yeah. that, I, 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 I'm still kind of stuck. Because I never, as black in this position, it's very rare that I, the e5, uh, the e file break makes sense. Um, mm. So I end, you know, it's I, it's usually too much under control. So I, I kind yeah. of like end up being stuck waiting for him to do something. Okay. okay. Yeah. yeah. I will. I will show you something since you said that sentence that you will like because you will get exactly what you want. I will show you something where you will get this e5 break. So there is a system I like where. You will get the e5 break as impossible as it sounds right now. So mm-hmm. let's just play the move. So let's say we can get We don't show what we are going to do with our pawns yet. White does his typical London system moves. We complete the Fianchetto. 
they do you know you know the london system yeah e3 yeah. c3 all this um, they just don't even look at the board they just do these moves <laughs> uh, and here we are going to play d6 so already we are blunting this bishop you know this bishop is less effective thanks to this pawn on d6 and we do have an intention of going e5 later now you may be wondering like how will we ever achieve it i will show you so let's say castle Let's say we play knight c6. Um, you don't worry about d5. Uh, first of all, right? Knight now, c6 you, but... is a new move for me. I know, I, I know. Yeah. 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 And it, uh, yeah, it is possible. And it makes a difference if it's c6 or uh, d7? Yes. This, and okay. I will explain exactly why. Because our plan is this knight will get to d7. And now, no force on earth stops us from e5. <laughs> the uh... only way to stop e5 is to play d5 themselves. In which case we are fine, um, you know, we can use the e5 square for our knight and uh, we have a game, their bishop again, um, you know, we have this pawn structure c7 and d6, which means their bishop is not creating any major problems. We got our piece to e5 and we continue from here. It is not That's a very sad. open position, uh, but uh, an interesting one, which you can try. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, no, that's yeah. A, I've, it's actually a very interesting maneuver. I've always, yeah. you know, I, I, I start by like moving the rook on the e file, sometimes yeah, the yeah. queen, and I so, still never achieve to get that. that yeah. Break. But this yeah. is a nice system. So here already, if they, let's say, continue to complete the learning system, we play e5. So if they take, we take back. And if you realize we have enough control, bishop, knight, knight. And they only have knight and bishop. So that's why we didn't put our knight on d7 because we needed both these knights on these particular squares. So, you know, and uh, it's not a, like a winning game for black, but black is fine. Uh, you have, so you can play this aggressively later on with even f5, maybe e4, things like that, pushing on the king side and center. Maybe at some point you play a preventative king h8. So let's say I'll just make some move for white, uh, some move. Uh, let's say king h8 just to avoid any uh, tactics on this diagonal uh, on this diagonal and uh, then you can play with e f5 and just uh, how the game evolves but uh, you will not have major problems like I mean, you know i mean it's still a long way to go but mm -hmm. when the knight moves the bishop will be out yeah you can try this it's an interesting position um, very different from the things that you have been trying but clearly not very one-sided like it's not one where white is having all the fun um, yeah yeah. No, I I really like it. I've always, because yeah. it, it's natural for me that the e file break. So uh, yes. I, I've tried every other way to yeah. prepare it besides this little maneuver because yeah. I, I, yeah. I always avoided the knight to c six. To yes. be honest, mostly from the common rule, I, I thought yes, the, the, yes. The, yes. just put it in general. It's it's better yeah. uh, behind yeah. the pawn. True, true. In general, the in d four openings in queen pawn openings, the knight should not block the c pawn that's what i teach my students as well the only place the only time knight on c6 makes any sense is if we can pull off e5 which we are doing now um, you know now as i showed you like there is no way to stop e5 other than like playing d5 themselves if they play bishop g5 you just you know sidestep you still will get e5 um yeah so e5 is coming and if they play d5 now this knight on c6 went to a good square why is it any worse than White's knight, we are more centralized and yeah, everything is fine. It's a complex middle game. Um, at some point, you know, if they play d5, you will be able to uh, attack this pawn with your pawn breaks, c6, maybe e6, probably c6. And yeah, um, you can try this out and see how you like it. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Nice one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, maybe we can talk a little bit about your white openings if you like. Yeah, I, I have a quick question. So, well, no, actually, I, I'd love to, to to see your your take first of all on on my white openings and. Well, I, I, but maybe yeah. yeah, your question first. Yeah. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. So, so one of the openings that frustrate me is yes. the Scandinavian, uh, oh. not necessarily because it's trappy, but because I don't get the fun play. Like if it's Italian, if it's the scotch opening that i'm yeah, facing yeah yeah, yeah. like you but, mean you, when you play against you play as white against scandinavian yeah black is playing yeah. scandinavian okay yeah. okay yeah. okay no it's good that you asked no i'm glad yeah so let's talk about that has the board flipped for you you are able to see the it white has. side on the bottom okay yeah perfect okay and yeah all of these uh, i think are getting added here so at the end 
I am hoping that you should be just able to download and it will download everything. Uh, and if you are, I don't know, if you, there is a PGN with you, do you know how to view it later? How will you be able to access that material later? Do you know? I, I think I can figure it out. Yeah. You should be able um, to figure it out. Like uh, yeah. one easy way is to um, go to this uh, learn and analysis. I'll not do it right now because it'll take me out of the screen. Mm -hmm. But chess.com has a free analysis board uh, where you can just import PGN. Like this PGN, you save it as a file, save it as a notepad, like a text file in your, you know, in your machine. And later you can just um, pop that open or copy the contents and you should be able to add to it or um, just access it this way. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Or if there are other, you know, softwares you have, but you don't need any. Uh, yeah. Okay. So you can use free leeches or chess.com things. Yeah. 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 Using a leeches study, you should be able to import it there and uh, look at it. Yeah. Okay. So let's yeah. look at Scandinavian. So you asked me about Scandinavian. Now, what do you play here? Oh, so sorry. I forgot to mention now that I remember. Oh. Okay. Uh, so Scandinavian is another reason why I don't like Scandinavian. There's an even worse opening that I do against against white, and that's the French. It's a horrible opening for me. Okay. Um, okay. Especially just the pressure on my center. Uh, usually yeah. collapse and I don't get compensation elsewhere. Uh, okay. So so, okay. so I, I, I try to avoid pushing here because I'll go into the French. If I take, mm -hmm. it's kind of boring for a while. It's just a game for a long time. I don't yeah. see much progress from there. Yeah. yeah, that is true. I unfortunately do not have something amazing where to make it not boring. Take Pushing is bad because you do get a um, like you actually get a Karokan uh, if, or French, like like something like this. Uh, you get a Karokan, but uh, you are um, sort of one tempo down in some ways um, because, for example, you know, let's say knight f3, black can already go c5. But if you compare this position, this position, if I look at the notation, we are on move number four and it's white's move, yeah, with uh, this yeah. c5, move four and white's move. So, but if we compare this with a regular Karokan, it goes like this, and then the advanced variation, which I've seen you play uh, in one mm -hmm. of the games I looked at. So let's say bishop here, knight f3. This is one of the popular options. And uh, here, let's say c5. So basically, you know, uh, white, black gets c5 in two moves here, c6 first, then c5. But in the Scandinavian with that move order, <laughs> they are uh, getting it in one shot. So that okay. is worse, a worse version for uh, white yeah so, so, pushing so is not always, good. always always take, take. yeah yeah okay. so always take and here there are multiple approaches um, the more aggressive one which ends up not being aggressive i'm sure you try knight c3 i'm guessing right? yeah yeah and knight c3 is fine it's the main move i think um yeah uh, and, and a and lot of is, times i face the yeah. queen going to to a5 which is why okay. i've stopped placing the knight there okay, and, okay. Uh, going for knight to f3 they usually pin me yeah i move my bishop and then mm -hmm. kind of the game yeah. continues yeah yeah i lately knight like knight f3 through. but here i will tell you again if queen a5 is what you're facing there is a interesting system uh, you go bishop c4 i think so um, you're not you're leaving this knight home and you're leaving the d pawn right now at home so let's say black plays something normal now you don't go d4 you go d3 Let's say they play their Scandinavian moves. I don't know, c6 or something. We go bishop d2, lining up um, this. At some point, Scandinavian players will often go to uh, c7 with their queen just to get out of any tactics. Now we go queen e2, and uh, they may play, let's say, some move. I don't know, bishop g4, even not bishop f3 or something. Uh, I wish I knew exactly how this went, but uh, basically, the idea is. You're going to castle queen side. That's why we did this uh, shenanigans. <laughs> ah, okay. You're going to castle queen side. And uh, at some point they will, oops, no, no, that's, that's an accident. That's uh, not part of the recommendation. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So you're going to castle queen side. I don't remember exactly how, but uh, let's say something like this. And then you want to play g4, f4, f5, and play against this e6 pawn and this bishop. Like, so let's say some, uh, whose move is it? It's... Uh, oh, it's white's move, yeah? So let's say g4. Let's say f4. We are threatening f5, yeah? So you can see we are getting some initiative, like uh, black. Mm -hmm. uh, and 
it's not maybe totally sound but if you want something aggressive and attacking you can look at this um you can take a look at this and it will lead to interesting fights and if you don't like this or if they play this will only work more effectively against queen a5 i think there are other moves after knight c3 queen mm -hmm. d6 is a move and also queen d8 is a move uh, queen d8 is a move that i recommend to some of my students <laughs> which is absolutely ridiculous looking move like you just undevelop everything <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, but okay uh, but against this this whole system doesn't make as much sense um, but uh, so if you don't like this what I just showed you then you play knight f3 lately I also myself play knight f3 and I think this is a little more positional but it is also good so the positional idea that white has is to go d4 and c4 build this center with two pawns on uh, d and c that's what white would like to do what do you face here usually uh, bishop g4 you said yeah yeah, bishop g4. Um, yeah, so you go bishop b3, I, let's say. Yeah. Uh, and then a lot of the times I had avoided... I, I used to put aim for both the d4 and, and c4 as quickly as possible, just so uh -huh. I can develop the knight better. Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of the time I found that eventually d4 as a pawn became weak because I wasn't able yeah. to push it. So I've, I've been, yeah, I've yeah, been yeah. A, used, yeah, a little bit oh, more hesitant... Oh. In, in going okay. that full way. Um, okay. But I, I, I'd love to see if you have, what would be the ideas here? Like usually I'd probably, after this, I would probably push my pawn up to d4. They would develop their knight naturally. Yeah, um, yeah. no, and that, which, that which, is... uh, yeah, how, how would you kind of think about next steps after development? Yeah, yeah. So let's say we castle, let's say they go e6. Now, one thing when this, uh, I would say when you have this bishop lined up with your queen and uh, bishop like this, almost always it's good to throw in h3. Uh, they may take or not take. If they take, you are very happy. Your bishop comes to f3. So let's say they don't take and uh, they go anywhere. And now we will just uh, play d4 and c4 on the next two moves. So I don't know what they do. So d4, c4, gaining a little tempo on the queen. Let's say the queen goes somewhere. Um, and do you just play this position? Um, you have a little space. And how I like to treat it is positionally, it's not something where you are going for an attack, but basically you are trying to cramp the black pieces. Like uh, you are trying to avoid exchanges, use the fact that you're controlling all these squares, black cannot move too much and just develop while avoiding exchanges. Like, uh, you know, bring your pieces to good squares. I don't know. Uh, let's say, you know, rookie one, some queens move somewhere. Maybe the other rook comes to either d1 or c1 and keeping tension in the position. And uh, it may not be very suitable to your style, to be honest with you, this uh, game, this type of game. Um, but that is the way uh, I think to play a position like this, where you just have some space and white, black is not, black doesn't have any major problems. There are no weaknesses and there are no, you know, very bad pieces. Everything is more or less fine, but you just have this space and you try to, keep building and building and at some point black will run out of useful moves sort of that's the idea mm -hmm. yeah okay yeah but uh, at the same time having said that i think the previous option that i showed you will be more to your style which is the knight c3 and uh, uh, with this tricky uh, there is there are points to not putting the point now pawn on d4 by the way uh, one of the points is we are controlling this e4 square so you know at no, no point do they have this this kind of ideas you know, mm -hmm. using the pins. Uh, also, they do not, they are not able to attack your d4 pawn, you know, <laughs> because there is no pawn on d4. And uh, second thing is, we are, of course, castling queen side. So it's um, just the fact of opposite side castling makes it more uh, aggressive and attacking. Oops, again, not this move. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, then we are no, trying to- To be honest, I, I, I like it. Um, yeah. So uh, it's, 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 it's a nice- about. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, yeah I, sure. because I, I don't see a lot of moves that a Scandinavian player that yes. would be very threatening towards the queen side. So I don't, I, I think I'll get away with it. A lot of the games yeah, in my and, rating. And I don't think this is like a terrible, like it's not terribly bad either. I don't know if I have a way to switch on the computer here. Uh, probably not. But okay, I don't think it's even objectively, it's not like, you know, it's not like white is losing on anything. It's playable. It's a little unorthodox, you know, not very conventional way of developing our pieces, but it's very interesting. And you are trying to 
gain some tempo against this bishop, you will, you know, since you have castle queen side, you are going to freely push all of these three pawns up the board and create problems for your opponent while their king is in the center. If they play e6, e6 pawn becomes a target, already being targeted by two of our pieces, you know, so let's go a little further. At some point, maybe some sacrifices. I don't think it works right now, but otherwise, you know, like I showed you, uh, g4, f4, it is not, uh, it is, if you have, you know, flip the board, it's not very comfortable to get mm -hmm. under this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so black doesn't have a very good experience. So I think it's a good weapon you can try. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Oh, okay. thank you so much. That's, uh, it's, it's amazingly, sometimes it just needs to be pointed in the right way. Um, yeah, like I, think, I hope it helps. Yeah. Yeah. I think the the first opening that I kind of started playing consciously were, were the Italian and then the Smith Mora and then mm -hmm. other little sidelines start getting added. So I, I became familiar with some of the the more basic traps there or some yes. of the more basic ways of at least long term playing or where pieces can be moving around. Um, yes. So this this is already giving me a, a different perspective of how to approach this. Yeah, so try it out. I would really, again, suggest playing less blitz and more rapid if you can, uh, and no bullet. That should help you. And yeah, um, try these openings and maybe let me know in a month or so how it goes. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay, Adam, we'll end it here. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, okay. Hopefully I, yeah. this helps you. Yeah, okay. Th thank you so much. Really appreciate your time. And yeah. Uh, yeah. Ah, shoot me a message when... Um... When this, uh, if if this gets uploaded, I'd love to I'd love to sure. revisit it sometime. Sure, sure. I will let you know if and when when that happens. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much for your time. Yeah. Yeah. Bye. Cheers. Bye. Bye. Yeah.